All right, today we're going to go over areas of quadrilaterals. Remember, quadrilaterals means shapes with four sides. And so first, before we get into the area formulas for each and every one of these things, we're going to review what the shape is. And so this is all old. We've had this before. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two sets, right, two sets, or two pairs of opposite sides parallel. The height is sometimes called the altitude. Right? Realize that because this is the definition, two pairs, both sets of opposite sides parallel, right? a rectangle would fit this definition, a rhombus would fit this definition, and a square would fit this definition. And so the area formula for a parallelogram is base times height. And as this is the first section, I'm going to kind of point out that if you really want to keep productive notes, whether the letters are capital or not will eventually matter in this unit. And so this is a little b for just the base of the shape, the two-dimensional shape, and the h for the height of the two-dimensional shape. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, a obviously capital A for the area. Um, and so you're just going to do the base times the height. Now, how are we going to make this harder than when you started learning area of rectangle in elementary school? Right? And so the book is going to do things where they put maybe the dashed line on the outside. Right? And they give you numbers here. They say like this is three and this is five. All right. And this is the height here. Right. And so you would have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, realizing that, the, you know, whatever this number is here is still the base just from there, not this added three. And that this number matches the height and in the inside. And so that's the base and the height. And so you'd have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared with that right triangle to get the, the height equal to four. Then you just plug it at base times height. So they're going to disguise some numbers a little bit more than they had for you in previous years of mathematics. And so here's an example. And so I know 23 is the base. Just this 23. Just this is the base. The height then goes all the way straight up, which matches this right here. And so to find that height, I have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, c has to be the hypotenuse. 49 plus h squared equals 625. So when I minus 49 both sides, I get 576. I would then square root both sides. Square root, square root, and I get h equals 24. And then so for the area, the area would be the base, 23, times the height, 24, or 552. And now units are going to matter in this chapter, this unit, this module, feet squared. It's feet times feet, so feet squared. To check my math here. I did that in my head instead of using a calculator, and I did get it correct, 552. So that is the correct answer for example one. And so you try. The thing that is tricky with this is that you might want to redraw it so that that height goes straight up. So now I know the height is five, straight up. So I might makes it easier on your brain. The 4 would be over here, the 10 would be over there. What number is meaningless? Yes, the 4 is meaningless. And so you're just going to have the 10 and the 5, base times height, area equals 10 times 5 or 50 inches squared. Sorry, always remember the unit in this chapter. Next, we have these special cases. 
And I just call them special cases because I don't want to argue with kids in class. All right. And so you probably learned this as area equals length times width, which is exactly the same thing as base times height. So I'm always going to say base times height. If you say length times width with a rectangle, that's fine. All right. It's no different. With a square, all of the sides are the same. And so I will still say base times height. But if one side times one side makes one side squared, that formula some people learn. That's just as good. They're the same. So those are both true. There's also the rhombus has a special case we'll talk about eventually. But area equals base times site works for them as well. So this is a review of what a trapezoid is. Trapezoid, instead of having two parallel sides, we only have one set of parallel sides right? and so we have the height which again they can disguise on the outside or maybe they'll draw it um, straight as a right trapezoid so the height straight up and down there right the one thing they will do is they'll try to disguise it and so please know that the parallel sides of the bases so this is a base and this is a base and then this is a height. So you kind of got to like redraw when it's like this, like that. Because when the line that goes straight from the parallel sides is the height. And we need to know both bases because our formula here, I usually put the H at the end. So I usually write it like, oh, I don't need to write it like that thick. One half, the base is added together times the height. All right. Remember that timesing by half is the same as dividing by two, so you could have just do A equals the bases added together times the height, the whole thing divided by two. Those are all three formulas the same. Again, the parallel sides are the bases. All right. It has to be the sides that would not touch, the parallel sides of the bases. And so... For this example here, Andrew needs enough mulch to cover the garden, right? And one bag of mulch covers 12 square feet. How many bags of mulch does she need to buy? And so I'm going to really quick redraw the trapezoid so that I see the height here, seven, straight up and down. That makes the bottom eight and the top 1.5. And so area equals one half, right? I add 1.5 plus 8 together, and then the height is 7. So I get, I'm going to change 1 half to 0 0.5 times 9.5 times 7. And then I'm just going to use that in a calculator. And so I type it in, and I get 33.25. And so how many bags of mulch? One bag covers 12 square feet. This is feet squared here. Is one bag enough? Well, obviously no, 33 is more than 12. All right. Is two bags enough? Hopefully you'll understand that two bags is 24, so that's not enough yet. So we would need to buy three bags of mulch. Again, um, this is a right tra tra uh, trapezoid, and so to find the height here, I have to use the right triangle rules. If this top part right here is 9, then the first part of this is 9, and the second part is 3. Why 9 and 3? Because 9 plus 3 makes 12. And so this is still a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so H equals 4. And so then I do the area formula, area equals one half, base one plus base two times the height, which is, again, I'm going to make it 0 0.5 times 21 times four, which equals 42 feet squared. The last shape we're going to help is kite. Now, kite rules fit a rhombus as well. Remember, a kite has two consecutive um, congruent sides, two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. 
right, which Rhombus is. So Rhombus, you can use either formula, the parallelogram, base times height, or the kite roll diagonals times each other and then cut in half. And so just know that a rhombus fits either rule. Based on what information they give you, use the rule that will be easiest. Right. And so this, again, is my rule of area for a kite. Sometimes people like to write it as diagonal times diagonal over 2. Just please remember that those Ds stand for diagonal. Some people tend to forget sometimes, so you might want to make a separate note of that. Right, but the area is one half diagonal one times diagonal two. And so for this one, I want to do one half diagonal one times diagonal two. Now, this is tricky. This six is with that dash. So this one down here is also six. And so the whole thing is 12. This is also than 7, and so the whole thing here is 14. Right. So that's how I'm going to type it into my calculator, and I get the area is 84 millimeters squared. No, oh, that was the last example. I thought we had one more. That's the homework in my class. I wish you the best of luck.